on your presentation there, uh, it needs to be mentioned that uh, Brigham Young University and the Mormons, uh, back in the early 60s, and, and by the way, I was raised in a Mormon household. I'm, uh, I'm a practicing Mormon. I'll keep practicing till I get it right. <clears throat> but uh, as I grew up, I was taught tolerance for all, all religions and all races. And, and as a matter of fact, I've got a Navajo sister who came to our family on the Indian placement program. Uh, the Mormons used to have a placement program where voluntarily in Mormon Indian families, or Native American, we call them now, would uh, send their children to school at a white uh, school for the winter and then back to the reservation in the summer. And Virginia came to us as a little scared nine-year-old Navajo kid and uh, she had had a dream, just you know, like you said, some of these have dreams that she was supposed to, to go with these white Americans, but the matriarch in the family of the Navajos was you know, the head of the thing and uh, so they had to ask permission of the mother. She said no. The next day, the mother said, yes, I had a dream last night that my daughter's supposed to go there. She's now a registered surgical nurse in uh, Las Vegas and very well do. She writes children's books and just a wonderful person. So because the Mormons get sent everywhere all around the world on their missions, I feel like the Mormon religion has a more tolerant attitude toward other races and, and things because we, we have that culture. Uh, it needs to be mentioned that the Mormons would accept blacks as, uh, as members, you know, whereas many of those uh, places down south, they not only discriminated against uh, the black athletes, but most of those churches down there were white, you know, were segregated churches too, that you, a black person could not belong. I just wish the Mormon church had gone to God 50 years earlier about the priesthood thing, and God might have said... Uh, well, it's about time you guys showed up and asked me about it. <laughs> Thanks. Well, I appreciate those comments. And it, it's a little bit uh, ironic, for example, even that, that uh, the University of Wyoming was sort of viewed from the outside as somewhat racist in this whole deal. But, but you take a look at, at what we were doing uh, welcoming African American student athletes to the campus all through the 60s when everybody else down in, in the South weren't. And so it's, it's kind of ironic that we ended up getting uh, a lot of the bad press. And I think the same goes for, for like you said, the LDS Church is, has welcomed African Americans and Native Americans into their church for centuries. And uh, it's, it's, uh, it's not certainly a situation where, where uh, we intend necessarily to single out the LDS church by any means because the same thing could have happened had, had Baylor University come to the University of Wyoming to play football and the Southern Baptists uh, uh, hadn't allowed uh, African Americans in their church. So it's, it's, that's just the way it was. If I could jump in on that as well. Um, I think it's true that the LDS Church has, has welcomed people of all races um, in interesting kinds of ways since its foundation. Um, certainly African Americans, Native Americans, Polynesians, Pacific Islanders, um, they, they see themselves very much as a church for the entire world and everyone should be welcomed in. However, it's also had racial problems ever since the beginning and I think we can't sweep those under the, under the rug. Um, particularly for African Americans in modern um, Mormonism, the problem is that the LDS Church has never officially repudiated the folklore that justified that was used to justify the priesthood um, restriction, and so there are still tales of um, people being told, for example, that black people were neutral in the war in heaven, and that's why they're black, and so they're seen as inferior spiritually. Even today, those, those tales still circulate, and the, the LDS hierarchy has never repudiated them, um, never officially said anything, never apologized for what ultimately looks like it was a human policy, not a divine um, doctrine. And so, so there's still racial tension in the church, I think, even now. Uh, when you were talking about um, the blacks and Indians 
not being able to be priests. Mm -hmm. I thought I heard you say that there were advantages to being a priest in the afterlife. Is there a hierarchy in heaven? That's actually surprisingly complicated. So the, uh, um, I wish I had another PowerPoint here. I could draw it for you. Um, there's uh, basically three degrees of glory or degrees of exaltation in the afterlife according to LDS cosmology. So there are three levels, essentially. The um, celestial, the, I get these mixed up, the terrestrial, and then the telestial. So pretty much all of us end up in heaven it's just a question of where, right? Um, and so in order to reach the highest levels of heaven, in order to be in the bosom of the Father um, and, and to really get where you wanna go, right? Um, you are saved with your family, so you need to be married. And in the 19th century, the understanding was that you need to participate in celestial marriage, which at that time meant polygamy. You can't do polygamy unless you've got the priesthood. You can't do polygamy unless you can go into the temple and be sealed because those are the marriages that last into the afterlife. Um, to, you have to be sealed to your spouse or spouses. Um, and that's a temple ceremony. That can't be done outside the temple once the temples are built. Um, and so, so those ceremonies are absolutely necess necessary in order to reach the highest levels of heaven. Um, you also, in order to go through any sealing ceremonies, you need to have your endowments. You have to go through that initiation ceremony where you get the Mormon underwear and the whole nine yards, right? Um, <coughs> and those were the ceremonies that African American people of African descent were excluded from. Native Americans were allowed to go through those ceremonies, and Native American men were ordained to the priesthood. Um, so we, had, what I think is really interesting about these two groups is that you get two non-white groups, one of whom is very desirable and one of whom is really shunned. Um, so yeah.